Game number two, our Onik gonna make this 1-2-1, or it's gonna be 2-0. Because the emblem selection. Now, the Lancelot is using the same emblem with like Albert before. Man, if if Geek Fam win this against Onik, that is a huge flex onto Albert. The baby alien from RRQ coming into the fray of Sky Kings as the jungle. And that would be a huge mess to his ego as we welcome you, ladies and gentlemen, to game number two of Geek Fam and Onyx. And like I mentioned before, it's gonna be dangerous because Geek Fam might be not playing too aggressively to dive in into the Onyx jungler like on the first game because it's gonna be dangerous. But Kaja, they need to like put all eyes on the Baloiski because Baloiski is using a pick-off hero and it's gonna be dangerous if the Divine Judgment happening. A lot of heroes can follow up Baloiski movement. I agree, but that is when he gets that level 4. Earlier on, I do believe that there is a certain amount of power in the formation coming in from Onik with a pick-off as well as that early game of damage from Sans, but here it is. Well, Flicker early there from Baloi, just getting the slow down. And it's a big Flicker resource burnt out. Not too sure about that worth but they were looking for first blood. Keyboy even saved his flicker. So yeah, again, big win for Onyx. Oh, Beloy able to escape for now, but Albert was the one who secured that jungle creep. And it's still just a very, very aggressive early game. Start for both, but no kills. Yep. What I'm really concerned about is the fact that earlier on in game number one, Geek Fam, they were able to pressure Albert on the Lancelot heavily. But this time around, no one has been able to actually penetrate into the defenses, and Niall still farming up a storm against Albert on the Bane. And on the first contest, Bane and Lancelot, both of them are two strong heroes for the contest. One can use the Tone Rose and the Retribution, and one can use the Deathly Catch. So it, it will give it a knockback effect on the enemies. Who has a better advantage though, Kolios, in these particular scenarios? 50-50. 50-50? All right, so both of these teams are looking for 50-50 as they are all oh. collapsing onto the turtle. Beautiful Thorn Rose to taunt away from the Tyrant's Revenge, but does seem like Onik have more control here. Defensive Phantom Execution used up. Meanwhile, whoa, where's Luke at? That's a flicker used up, no penalty. Oh, he still has the penalty zone, but both teams are actually not going to go for it just yet. Keyboard with a good Tyrant's Revenge, locking Luke down. No flicker, but he does have that penalty zone. He's saving it. Wow, the calculations from Luke. And Boots and Keyboy know it. That's why they, did, they didn't want to dive in into the outer bottom turret. It's gonna be dangerous if penalty zone have been used. Keyboy, no ult just yet, no rage to play with. Beloy, on the other hand, has that divine judgment. Oh, Niall gets splashed with some damage. Sans dealing a lot. Phantom execution used up with the call altar as well. Now giving them a lot of HP. Retribution, but Tyrant's Rage is timed perfectly onto it. Divine Judgment defensively, but Boots runs him down. Beloy, 1 HP under the turret. That's a DPC! And it saves Beloy! Niall picks up the first blood. It's a big W for the Geeks. Oh, huge, huge trade here for the side of Geek Fam. Being able to pick up a member as well as that neutral objective. And you saw that Albert was a little bit late to the party. He came in after he was forced to clear in that mid side. And when he did, Niall already used that retribution to pick it up for himself. Yeah, it's a little bit miscommunication, but look at oh. on the mid lane now. Oh. Flicker out. Almost. <laughs> yeah. Well, because he's using the flicker that will need to come out. If not, he will take him down. But back to the topics that oh. where Albert is late to joining the first turtle. That's the problem. Because Oni cannot contest it very well. And Geekbum got. Uh, one turtle and one kill points. Wouldn't you expect that at this point Onik will look for something different on the map? Is it required for them to contest these neutral objectives if they're kind of behind in rotations? Mm, there's a different option that maybe they can move to the gold league, Eterna. That they can, uh, like having uh, pressure to cut Chadera and making CW doing the plating. So it can lead the gold, but yeah, first turtle. The tar all of the turtles right now is really important. Jeez. Wait, that damage. Turn of our memory used up as well. CW taken very low. And this is what you can see from a very good Brody player. Never afraid to use that Torn Apart memory as poke. You don't need to just use it as an, as an execute. We have a fun fact here by Grab. Wait a minute, Albert. Oh, that's a lockdown, but the Cole Ultra saves him. Chadera with the solo kill up top with a good flicker. And now a boy. 
with a stampede, bringing both of them back under the turret. Chadera with a torn apart memory, but the call ulcer comes in and signs, splashes Chadera, finding a kill. Keyboy with a tower revenge, but it is a boy who finds a kill onto Albert. A two for one, definitely still value for Geek Fam. And that pushes them to 1,100 gold lead here in the first five minutes of the game. Again, the same story here. Geek Fam holding control in the early game. Boots trying to do what he can, but in the end, it's gonna go over to Geek again. Another turtle. Especially the two who down are the jungler and the gold lane. It's a really important role, and Geek Fam is <laughs> getting another turtle. Oh. Ooh, you see that? Boots actually got the gold buff. Small win. Small win. A little bit small Tony win. would say <laughs> yeah. it's small wins are built up. That's the copium in Ghani right now. That's the copium in Ghani yeah, right now. If we see at the goal difference, I think it's not too far away. So Ani successfully still farming. Charge Revenge and the Rage used up. No Inspire though, so there's no actual kill threat. Beloyd just walks out and Luke has rotated from the bottom lane all the way to the top lane. We have an audience prediction here. and it, Wow, I think this is the first time ever oh, 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 that you see Onik and Geek at what, 50-50? Super close. Mm -hmm. Super close. But this was wonderfully done by Chidera in the top lane. He knew exactly his role on the Brody was. Siege, Siege, farm, Siege. Get some damage onto CW. Pressure him just a little bit. And the fact that he's been able to succeed in the top lane, he now rotates towards the bottom lane. And notice that Voloisky has been very close to him. He's protecting Chidera here making sure that he doesn't get punished in the first few minutes of the game. Because Brody didn't need the items on the early game to shine. Mm -hmm. As we know, the Torn by Memory is already being painful. Good vision from Boloisky. He's going to be oh engaged on though in the back. of Phantom Execution connects Cole Ultra versus Cole Ultra, but Niall's able to get them back down. Divine Judgment onto Boots. Very low. Consecration gets him back to half. Wow. They still want the team fight. And the kiting is really good using the Cold Altar to make them back and go away without any kill points from both of the teams. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Almost cancelled by the go away. CW using this really well, but wow, Niall still wants to go in. Inspire used up by CW for the sustain. Penalty zone. CW is 0, 2, and 1. Well, it, it's a hard time for CW because, but in, in exchange, only got the third lore. So there is no perfect turtle for Geek Farm right now. Um, it's how they, they need to make CW fat. They need to make CW do the farming. Seems like Geek Fam are just taking all the resources away, not giving them the necessary space to look for that CW power spike. How far is he from hitting that power spike? Oh, he's actually quite close. The Golden Snap should be built in around the ninth minute. He's super behind though. Okay, so he's behind in like 400 gold. That's not too bad mm -hmm. actually. That's CW bad. is catching up finally. Boloisky here does like look like he is looking for a play. But what do we what are we expecting here from Onik? Do we just wait on CW's power spike or is there something else that can be done? That's the first thing. And the second thing is waiting for the initiation from Boloisky if they want to play the counter setups mm. playstyle. That's really important. Because if they want to initiate first, they need to be careful. Because divine judgment can stop anything in front of it. And does Sans just keep using the Cult Altar? Is that the most value that he can get in the composition that Geek Fam brought? It depends. If he wants to do the team fight, yes, Cult Altar is the answer. But if he wants to play the pick off game, mm -hmm. maybe he can steal the Divine Judgment. You're right. I mean, I think there's also another choice, right? There's also the uh, penalty zone, zone that we've seen many times before. But yeah, you're right. I think for the most part, Cult Altar is a bit too valuable to let go. Yeah, because they already have enough CC from the um, Deadly Catch, from the Tyron Rage, or Tyron Revenge. I think uh, Penalty Zone is the third option to be stolen from IMU. That makes sense. But looking at these items, it doesn't make too much sense for me. Brody leading that much, is he only ahead in one item? Yeah. But that's what makes Brody so good. You don't really need a lot of gold, like Goldie's already mentioned. You just wait for that power spike, and even if you don't get any kills in the laning phase, as long as you're able to clear it out and siege the turrets down, that's a big W, Divine Judgment! Penalty Zone used up as well. 
already. There's a lot of things just thrown out here with the call ultra on a two of both of the teams used up. Thorn Rose gonna see CW low. Boots able to escape. Tyrant's Rage onto two, but there's no real follow up. CW still playing in the back. Tone of our man gonna be used up in the fact of execution to the back. Finds three. Onyx forced back, and Keyboy is taken to one HP with that bloody retribution from Nile. One for zero trade here for the side of Geek Fam. Boots. Trying to open up vision and give information towards his team, but in the end, I do not think that he is going to be able to make a miracle play happen. But look at this, Albert is actually re-entering this. It's going to be a 50-50. Albert, they want to go for it. Tyrant's Revenge, Lock and Luke down. There you go, that's a deadly catch. Nile versus Albert, but Beloy does not. He's waiting for it. Oh, it's a stampede into a penalty zone! Into a torn apart memory! The Wombo Combo from Geek Fam. Now it's a go away from CW, forcing them in this tight spot. Now there's a lot of damage put in by the Muddles. CW versus the world. Now it's a random execution. All to the back. CW eating up that damage. But it has the Inspire to sustain back up. 1v1. Oh. CW with a shutdown and a triple kill. Adrenaline can kill you, man. Because they already got the Lord. And as we know, Melissa is a very good hero when the kiting happens. They tried to aim CW with all of the resources that they didn't have. CW got the triple kill, so it's a really not a good trade by trading it with the Lord itself. But it's a really nice penalty zone. Oh, the way that that entire team fight collapsed on one another, the usage of the resources, the timing. That was just wonderful. It was a symphony of just skills coming in from Geek Fam. Unfortunately, like you guys mentioned, CW be able to get the better of it. That would have ended so much worse for Onik had that not happened. But still, in the end, at the end of the day, it's Geek Fam going in. Oh, turn up our memory to the back boots. Oh, oh. saved by the cult altar. Just in time. That's a very good disengage from Onik. They're able to define the tier 2 in the bottom lane, but they lose out the tier 2 in the mid and top. So it's still a win for a Geek Fam. Keyboy charging. Niall able to dodge away from that with the Thorn Rose, and both teams, again, are chill. Uh, I think it's a ticking bomb for Geek Fam. Miracle. If it's mm -hmm. dragged to the late game with Keyboy initiation with CW, it, uh, Geek Fam gonna facing a hard time because they didn't have any like late game superhero that they pick. Keyboy was a bit too aggressive there, but he doesn't get punished by the Divine Judgment. Beloy doesn't have it up though. Now some good hits onto Niall, and Niall just eats it up. Orange buff, they should give this to CW now. He has hit that power spike, but no, they still give it to Albert. Huh, okay. Dude, uh, that, that would have been a disaster if the Divine Judgment was up. It would have been punished for sure. Because Gigvan need to counting on the Cult Altar later. Without Cult Altar, without the Divine Judgment from Beloy, they need to like go back first, maybe doing the kiting game, because Onyx will really strong. Please remember that Sans is using Valentina, can stole a lot of useful resources from the Geek Vam. Oh Depends no. on the needs. So, oh, oh, I don't think Beloy wants to go for that Divine Judgment on Keyboy. It's a very expensive resource. Unless Keyboy is super isolated. Well, the super isolated is hard for mm -hmm. Keyboy, I think, Mirko. Because Keyboy is a good player who tries to always, like, looking for another gap. Uh, a, a little bit gap for Keyboy is enough for him to make the initiation. Like, he will aim for the backline of the enemies, like for Aboy or even Chadera. That's why Geekfam needs to put all eyes on where is Keyboy later doing, during the team fights. I agree, I agree. That's definitely information that Geekfam really need to understand before they commit into the team fights. But I believe that Geekfam have been adapting really well towards Onik. They see that Onik rotating with a 4-1, they rotate with 3-2. Lancelot putting pressure in the top side. We saw earlier on that Terisla was controlling that bottom side. And in these long, drawn-out team fights, especially for the neutral objective, which is exactly what we're seeing on screen, it might be the exact same scenario that we saw in game number one, where Onik tunnel vision. Let's hope that they don't make the same mistake twice. Albert level 15, Niall level 15. The only difference is Niall doesn't have his ultimate up just yet, but look at the Lord already at half health. And even Beloy's healer. 
he, he's prepared to do the flanking games. He will try to pick up CW later. But Boots is the, the, the attention seeker. He needs to put all eyes on Boots, so the Geek Vamps didn't need to pay the attention where Keyboy is at. That's a reset. Boots have done, has done enough. He's actually back Naya out. And that's a torn apart memory. A penalty zone even used up. A bit too aggressive, I feel like. That's a deadly catch. Now from Albert to disengage. And for both of these teams, they will reset again. But Geek Farmer still holding on to that Lord. They're trying to get it to a position where it's easily reset here. Belois trying desperately, but look at Boots. Just standing closer to the Lord, not giving Geek Fam aggro. Keyboy charging the Tower's Revenge. A good spot out with the Muddles. As Luke gets chunked with two basic attacks. Just with the Muddles, though. Beloy looking for another opening. Nile going in. Boots dashing forward. Trying to bait in the penalty zone. Out of the back. CW did not pop to go away in time. But the Divine Judgment is stolen away by Saz. And he finds the kill in Tower's Revenge. On to the back. But CW is not in range to go for anything. No Inspire, a boy the flicker in. The Shadow Stampede brings them back for the damage from Chadera. But a Terrify delays this inevitable end for Keyboy. 3-4-1. The Lord also in favor of Geek Fam. Again, Luke do his magic. Using the penalty zone, using the flicker, it's a really important moment that he can catch a lot of heroes that make Onyx surprised. So the, the initiation from Luke being followed up by the Geek Fam teams very, very well. I need to mention something though, right? Even though Geek Fam were able to get three members from the side of Onyx plus the Lord, Onyx was able to get three towers just from lane management alone. Sans was able to slow push the top side. We saw that Boots was able to slow push the bottom side. And throughout that entirety of how that all happened, they had to lose three turrets, almost losing four. And those kinds of trades, sure, in the grand scheme of things, it does favor... Oh wait, in the short scheme of things, it favors Geek Fam. But in the long term, it favors Onyx. So they have to be careful about their housekeeping as Niall goes in with the Conceal. Conceal from Beloy. Oh, he finds Keyboy. Drags him back, the deadly catch in time. A Keyboy gets slain by Luke. That's a massive pick off, CW the models. Deja Vu to Echo versus Onyx and MSC, the same exact scenario. CW dealing damage, that's a Divine Judgment that Sans stole away. And he pulls Nio back to give Onyx another kill and a breath of relief. At least they get the one beast turret from the out, uh, top lane. And it's really important that Geek Fam needs to reset it right now. With a lot of minions coming, are they gonna like push it to another team fights? Because Chadera... Oh, Divine Judgment, Boots, a bit too much that he could chew. Luke with penalty zone, torn by memory! Takes Boots down, but CW does a lot of damage with the models and the Inspire. Not enough, however, to take any of the Geek Fam members down. Not just yet, but it does give them the space that is required. And one thing that we need to take in consideration is the fact that Geek Fam, they're lacking the amount of wave clear that Onyx has. Onyx has CW, Onyx has Albert with his deadly catch as well to clear these out. So in a siege situation, I do believe that Onyx has a little bit of an edge. But I don't know what kind of decision that Onyx had right now because they are like, go with the flow that Geek Fam created. Because every time Geek Fam tried to initiate, every time Geek Fam wants to bait Onyx to do that movement, like it's like Onyx following the movement itself. Go with the flow. You know what I was thinking just now? What? This is a rematch of MPL ID Grand Finals. No, MPL I <laughs> Grand Finals. Ah. MPL I Grand Finals, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was Geek The Fam. latest MPL I. But that was uh, with Jana, and actually Onyx were with Samo. Yeah, I remember that. But here, it's a completely different roster. No Kyrie, no Samo, no Jana QT, who's now oh, back to Drian his old name, well. Hades. And yeah, no Drian, it's Sans. Man, I'm wondering. Can Geek Fam go 2 0 against the MSC champions? Geek Fam, did they make it to playoffs last mm -hmm. season? They did, but yep, barely, did. right? Yeah. Unfortunately, they were sent home on the first day against Evo's Legends. Reverse swept, if you remember. But now with a new jungler in their hands who has matured and improved so much since his first debut in MPL Indonesia, they're looking to get a. Maybe the. Is this the first win ever? against Onik. It's looking to be it. If Onik can't look for the proper engage, Luke has been astoundingly annoying, especially onto Albert in these neutral objective takes. But look at the Lord, it's so low. We're moments away of pulling the trigger. And it's a really important Lord because it's already evolved that can help if 
Onyx got it, but if Geek Fam got it, uh, it's gonna be DM if a lot of heroes from Onyx getting picked off by Beloy. Penalty zone on the back, CW still free hitting in the back though now. Niall moving forward, finding the kill. Luke gets a call alter. Torn from memory gonna be used up as the Lord gets reset. Now to Divine Judgment. Now it's actually Winner Truncheon to evade from it. And the models are still placed down. Keyboard with the Tarnished Revenge. No Flicker committed down. No Albert though. This is free for Onyx. No for a Geek. Niall finds it. Beautiful retry. I thought CW would have been able to zone them away, but it's not enough. That's a really important movement when Geek Fam successfully pick up Albert before the Lord contest is happening. And now Onyx being pushed to playing the defensive game again. Are they gonna successfully defend it right now? I mean, for all the Onyx, just Sonics all around the world, let's hope so. Again, the wave management, half of the base turret was taken down, and the Lord is marching down in the top side as well. CW, he needs to be able to be facilitated in these particular team fights. If not, we'll see the exact same story as we did earlier on in that Lord fight. Yeah, because using Inspire, it's not easy to get out from the penalty zone Eterna, so he needs to be careful about his positioning. He's not been caught by Luke or even Beloisky. CW is an absolute menace every single time in these kind of situations. Look at him! Oh, Beloy is looking for it, gets caught in the Tyrant's Revenge right now, gets knocked up with the call, Ultra saves his life. Boots getting brought back to the team, but still has that immortality. Now back again, Consecration, turn about memory and a stolen penalty zone! CW again! Saving Onik from their demise. It's another splash of damage from Sans to take Luke down. Onik, the defense has happened again. It starts from Keyboy's movement. With a good Tyrone Refuge that Onyx see the moment and stalling the penalty zone using the IMU is really important for Sans. He's even using his flicker to like locking a lot of heroes from Geek Van and now they got the momentum. Oh man, Keyboy on his signature Kufra. We never expected, and yet the unexpected oh. happens over and over as they go for the siege this time around. Oh, that's a splash though. A boy finds a shutdown. It's two. A boy with a double. It was CW earlier. Now it's a boy, and it's Beloy with a divine judgment pulling. Keyboy back. Tower to bench. Niall able to evade from it though with a good puncture out. Now Kai Keyboy losing the immortality. Boots looking to get him out. There's a call alter from a boy to save his own life. But the whole altar will run out and Naya will keep on going. Sans has a no, divine no. judgment, but it only connects onto a boy. And Naya assassinates Sans. No way. Ladies and gentlemen, three members are off the board for the yellow porcupines. The main damage dealers are all gone. Boots and Keyboy. What in the world can they do? Just the two of them alone. Boots is pulling the minions. He's successful. Daddy's pulling the minions again, but Divine Judgment will, able, will be able to lock him down finally. Boots in the back. Now slam and a torn apart memory. Niall jumping in. Keyboy trying to make a miracle play. The Geeks have taken down the team above the sky, dragging them down to the depths. It's like deja vu. We see it yesterday when Alter Ego against our RQ. They successfully defended it. They tried to go into the RQ base, but look at that. But that split decision, it's a really important decision that makes Geek Fam can easily win this second game because of that initiation. 2-0 for the Geeks. A huge upset for the Sonics all around the world. This was the undefeated, the undisputed Onyx for so long. With Albert stepping in into the jungle. This is the result that we have been given. Ladies and gentlemen, without Kyrie, Onik have been stomped.